Now to our very first story, and the Speaker of Parliament has declared four seats in Parliament vacant following a petition by Member of Parliament for Tamale South, Haruna Idrisu. Now the effect of the ruling is that the NPP will now have 135 members in Parliament, whilst the NDC will have 136 members. Honourable Members, it is important to point out that the Speaker is called upon by the Standing Orders of Parliament particularly Order 18, to inform the House of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under Clause 1B to E, G and H of Article 97 of the Constitution. Accordingly, I proceed to inform the House that by the notification of the polls, the following members of parliament have, by their actions, vacated their seats in parliament. The members are Honorable Peter Yao Kwache Aka, NDC MP for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, now referred to as an independent parliamentary candidate for the same constituency. Two, Honorable Andrew Amwako Asiyama, independent member for former constituency in Ashanti region, now referred to as MPP parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Three, Honorable Kojo Asante, MPP MP for Suhum in the Eastern region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. And finally, Honorable Cynthia Mamile Morrison, MPP MP for Agona West constituency in the central region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. These MPs cannot be allowed by law and my good self to continue to pretend to be representing people that they don't believe in and they don't have any loyalty for in this house any longer. The House is accordingly so informed. Honorable members, I thank you for your patience and attention. And soon after the ruling, the leaders of Parliament reacted. Leader of the NPP, Kokos Afenu Markin, said the Speaker had no right to interpret the Constitution. Leader of the NDC, Kokos, on the other hand, praised the Speaker for his judgment. In your, in, your, in your ruling, my understanding was to the effect that your duty is not to interpret the Constitution. My understanding was to the effect that your duty is not to interpret the Constitution. But Mr. Speaker, it is important for me to emphasize one more time that when the statement was made by my respected colleague, Dr. Kaisel Atufosel, I did draw the attention of the House, including your good self, to the fact that the matter being a very grave matter, I have taken it upon myself to seek the court's interpretation of the matter. Mr. Speaker, indeed, yesterday, Parliament was duly said. Mr. Speaker, the facts you put out are not true. Mr. Speaker, these are credibility issues, so I will respond honorable, for the record. Honorable, honorable. Mr. Speaker, somebody has told you something. Mr. Speaker, you reserve the right to be there to make your point. Let me make my point too. Mr. Speaker, no way. Mr. Speaker, no way. I will... Mr. Speaker, whoever told you that I threw a paper at somebody, this has to do with my credibility. I will not allow hands you know, up. Honorable member, you don't listen at all. Mr. Speaker, I do. I never said Mr. you. Mr. Speaker, you said... I, I never said... said you threw a paper at anybody. Mr. Speaker... I Mr. Never Speaker, said that. that's exactly what you said. Let the answer check it. You Mr. See, Speaker, that is what you said. You are being carried away by your Mr. anger. Speaker, you are mean, not I'm listening. Not... Please, resume your seat. Mr. Speaker, as I said, permit me to congratulate the NDC Majority Caucus. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, from day one, from day one, we have not reneged on our responsibilities to work for the people of Ghana.
Today is the beginning of the process to reset Ghana. Yeah. The speaker, our country has gone through a lot. We have always made our point, but unfortunately we've not been able to succeed because we're not having the working majority. But now we have the working majority. Yeah. Right, Honorable Speaker, beginning the next parliamentary sitting will begin the process to take over as the majority caucus of this parliament. And we thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, we have taken note, we have taken note of the fact that our colleagues, the minority caucus, the new minority caucus have just worked out. But that will not stop us from doing what is right for the people of Ghana. We will do what is right. But their conduct exactly reflects the work of a minority caucus. Mr. Speaker, we thank you very much for this ruling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Interesting developments there in the House of Parliament uh, a few hours ago. Um, let's go live to our colleague Crosby Anand. He's been <clears throat> following developments in Parliament. Crosby, uh, what can you tell us? Right, so, uh, Papi, so just like you know, it has happened now. Uh, the seats have been declared vacant. And right now, I speak with you. The now majority caucus in Parliament, I'm talking about the NDC, uh, they have begun processes to transfer themselves from the then minority into the now majority. So I'm talking about the processes that are expected to happen going forward. You know that the election of a second deputy speaker has to happen. And now knowing that there's no independent uh, member of parliament, it means it will have to come from the part of the NDC. And you know that the speaker already has affiliations to the NDC. So if there is a second and the first deputy speaker, Joe Weiss, is from the NPP. So if there is a second deputy speaker, it means he has to come from the fold of the now majority and the NDC is what I'm talking about. After that, we're also looking at some names transfers or the rearrangement, if you like, tax and all of that. So all the names of the then minority members of parliament belonging to the NDC will have to be lifted and put on the right side of the speaker who they will then form as a majority in the house going forward until uh, the next elections and the next uh, session of parliament. These are some of the things that are expected to happen. Also, the committees in parliament, I should tell you, that will also see major shakeups. We're talking about uh, the committee heads as well as the composition of the committees. You know that a lot of the committees, depending on which committee it is, is having either a person from the majority as the chair of the committee, somebody from the minority as a ranking member and all of that. All of that will be affected by the now changes that we're seeing after the seats were declared vacant. So there's a lot of work expected to happen since this ruling has been given by the speaker. It's not going to be, it, it looks very fun. It looks very interesting on the face, but there is huge workload on the shoulders of the now majority. And they tell me that uh, they are very confident that they'll be able to do it properly and make sure that they serve the people of Ghana. Well, after the, the speaker made this ruling, the minority, now minority, I'm talking about the NPP led by their leader, Apio Markin, they addressed uh, the press. And in the address, uh, they were very sure in their minds that this was a wrong decision that the Speaker of Parliament has taken. And he's doing that because he is uh, conniving with the, uh, with the NDC, now the majority part of the House, to frustrate government business. So he says that from henceforth, I beg your pardon, henceforth, they, the MPP side of the House, are going to boycott parliamentary proceedings until the substantive case is determined by the Supreme Court, which he filed an application there uh, a few days ago after the former minority leader, Harun Idrisu, asked the Speaker of Parliament to declare these seats vacant. He spoke with the media when he made these allegations and said that the majority side, sorry, the former majority side, the now minority, will boycott uh, parliament until the case is determined. We'll take a listen to him shortly. But after that also uh, was uh, Kate C. Hammond, also a leading member of the of the NPP in parliament, very uh, vociferous. He has also been saying that, you know, this is coming, This uh, the president of the Formula case, and 
uh, Katie Yamon is telling us that the then speaker, Michael Quay, was horribly wrong. Now he's saying it. And he's saying that he was wrong, they accepted, but the speaker should not have followed in his steps, should not have followed in the footsteps of the former um, former Speaker of Parliament. So these are some of the dynamics happening. Let's take a listen to what Apinio Marking said. When we come back, we'll talk more about the reactions of the now majority, the NDC side of the House. We've just witnessed a conspiracy between the Speaker and the minority to bring confusion in the House. It is clear that Mr. Speaker avoided service of the writ to do the bidding of the NDC. It's so clear, but we believe in the law. We, as the majority caucus, immediately, immediately, are boycotting Parliament until this matter is determined by the Supreme Court. The, 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 the Speaker has no right to interpret the Constitution and it is so clear that what he did was to give advantage to the NDC and do the bidding of the NDC. We are not going to go further to litigate. We have a process at the court. We will fo follow it up if the court makes a pronouncement, we we'll respect the orders of the court. But because we believe that the issues we have raised are issues for interpretation. I've just moved from minority to majority. In fact, the people of Ghana voted for the NDC majority. But if not certain machinations, this should have happened from day one of this parliament. But you see, finally we are here. We are here to do the business of the people of Ghana. We are here to begin the process to reset our country. Our country has gone through very difficult times. In fact, oftentimes, we have blamed, the people of Ghana have blamed Parliament for not standing up for the people of Ghana. But obviously, you can't blame the NDC minority because we are not having the working majority. Today, we have the working majority and we begin the process to reset our country. We want to use this opportunity to assure the people of Ghana that the NDC majority will stand for the people of Ghana any day, any time. We will begin the process to move to the majority side and elect a new second deputy speaker on Tuesday. We have gone through so much, so much as a country, and this cannot continue. We thank the Speaker for standing with the people of Ghana, respecting the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, respecting President and the standing order of the people of Ghana, of, of the Parliament of Ghana. You know, all of this, we thank the people of Ghana by standing for, 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 for standing. We're going to stay a while longer on this developing subject. I can see a lot of you are taking interest uh, on our social media pages. Let's know what you think of unfolding developments. Let's go live now onto Zoom to speak to Dr. Rashid Rahman. He's executive director for the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. So it appears this eighth parliament of the Fourth Republic will go down in history. First of all, it, it gave us the Hank Parliament and now a decision which ultimately tilts the balance of power. Did you see this coming? Yes, Marcus, um, I saw this coming um, the very day that this um, news broke that the former minority leader was going to move this uh, motion on the floor of the House. I said to myself, it's going to be very difficult for anybody to try to do something different from what happened in the seventh parliament. Um, you know, when speakers rule, they rely on First of all, the Constitution, they rely on the standing orders, and they rely on precedence. Uh, I think in all these, I believe today that's what the Right Honorable Speaker did. Um, there are some who will agree with him and some who will disagree with him, and I believe that's the case with um, the MPP side of the House. 
But I believe that, you know, as a country that is governed by laws, um, the right thing that they are doing is to go to the court. So let the court uh, tell us what uh, they are reading of, uh, of what the right honorable speaker relied upon to make his ruling today. What they are reading What you're is. essentially saying, Dr. Draman, is that you have no qualms at all with the, the speaker's ruling on this matter because the decision he took today is fortified by the constitution, by the standing orders, and by precedents. Yes, indeed, I don't have, because my reading, and let me say I'm not a lawyer, I'm a political scientist, and I've been following our parliament over the years. Uh, and most of the time, we look at what happened in previous parliaments, even though, as the speaker himself said today, I mean, that does not necessarily tie the hands of a uh, of, uh, new speaker. But I think what ties his hands um, are the provisions of the constitution and the, the standing orders. And I think, um, I don't think that my reading of, of those provisions are different from his readings. I mean, there are different interpretations, uh, but you know, a few days ago uh, or yesterday indeed, when the debate was going on, I was, my attention was caught by a submission made by the honorable member for North Dai, uh, honorable Dafia Mako, when he spoke about the automaticity of some of these provisions of, of the law. And he made uh, reference to what happened when the Right Honorable Dua Jaho was elected Speaker of the Sixth Parliament. Automatically, he lost his seat and then somebody else was elected and so on. Uh, and if we look at what happened in the Seventh Parliament, true, um, the party wrote to the Speaker uh, to seek uh, his leave to declare the seat vacant. Uh, but the seventh parliament is not the eighth parliament. Eighth parliament is one where the balance of power is very tight. Uh, and I was not going to see the MPP commit suicide by writing to the speaker and saying, declare these seats vacant. <laughs> those who argue, those who argue that, you know, these people really haven't left the party uh, you know, I heard the speaker today say the record of poll, I think the data from the, our election uh, management body indicate clearly that these people have filed to contest uh, on the ticket of uh, their own as independent and not on the ticket of the party for which they went into parliament. And there are those who would also argue, uh, how could we see that, I mean, this is for the future, <laughs> but I think that the relationship between those individuals and their party, that is both the NDC and the MPP, because there's an NDC member as well, the relationship between those MPs and their parties, right. uh, those relationships have been broken. Right. Uh, and so really, I think, I mean, if you put all together, uh, well, uh, what happened today, for me, I expected it, uh, but I think this is the first time uncharted territory. Uh, let, let the Supreme Court tell us whether maybe that is strong, and I believe that will fortify our democracy as we go into the future. So I want to appeal right. to the leaders of our parliament, I mean, both the majority, I mean, the, the NDC and the MPP, I think to keep uh, their heads cool and uh, and and believe in the rule of law and let the rule of law uh, be one that prevails. Thank you very yes, much. Uh, thank yes. you very much, Dr. Rashid Rahman, uh, as with the Parliamentary uh, Affairs uh, Directorate. Thank you very much for your time on News 360. Uh, let me hop onto the other lines now and speak to a former director of the Ghana. Uh, School of Law, uh, Dr. Ansa Asare. Uh, I believe I got that right, Mr. Ansa Asare. I believe I got that right, sir. Thank you for your time on News 360. Um, do you honestly think that the Supreme Court uh, will have a say ultimately uh, in the secession? Well, thank you very much. I, I think that um, <clears throat> Either now, either of the political parties, you know, resent to it that the right 
in the, to check the correctness of the future institution uh, in the Supreme Court. But as to whether um, what the House did today may be overturned, overturned by the Supreme Court, you know, in the, um, you know, the in, in, like in the open. But honestly, uh, I believe that um, the, the House uh, exercised its authority, you know, in the um, in conformity with, with, with the rules of the House. Indeed, not only the rules of the House, which are the standing orders, but also based on the law and precedents. Yes, it's based on the law and precedents, and the law and precedents go in favor of the speaker's uh, ruling. Because all the precedents we, we've had so far in the show that um, the, the Supreme Court, you know, will not take to question, you know, the, the, um, the functions of Parliament in the way they are carried out in the regular exercise of the resolution of Parliament. The only uh, opportune time that the Supreme Court needs to be overturned is when it believes that um, the, the rules were sacrificed and that the conditions were not fulfilled. Now, in this case, uh, I doubt very much whether the rules is in but, 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 but finally, you must give it to the, the, the majority side led by uh, Apenio Markins for their decision to seek solace in the Supreme Court. They, they sought to injunct the Speaker from, from going ahead to make the decision. You must give it to them. The question again, please. I'm saying that you, you must give them some credit for, for, for seeking to uh, go to the Supreme Court in a quest to injunct the Speaker from going ahead to make the decision, uh, albeit unsuccessful. I don't seem to follow the question. You know, line is breaking. I'm afraid we've got to leave it here, but I thank you for your uh, contribution to yeah, our program thank tonight. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Mr. Ansar Asari is a former director of the Ghana School of Law. Still staying on the Speaker of Parliament ruling, NDC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama says the NDC becoming the majority in Parliament is a sign of good things to come the way of the NDC. If the report I am hearing from Parliament is true, then something historic has just happened. The report I am hearing is that the Speaker has declared four seats vacant. Of the four seats, three are from the MPP and one is from the NDC. So if those seats have been declared vacant, then it means in the life of one parliament, the minority has turned to the majority, and the majority has turned to the minority. So for me, God is even showing a sign of what is going to happen. Because even before we have cast one single ballot, the NDC has become the majority. But we have to make it a reality on 7th December 2024. And that is when the people of Ghana are going to cast their votes.